Thank you, Lord, for the protection that you have provided for us. And thank you for providing us with an answer to the chaos throughout the world. Amen. The news and media all giving us information such as the Ukraine and Russia crisis, one million displaced, worst Ebola epidemic in history, Hamas, Israel, 50 day war, deadliest violence of the decade, serious crisis, 100,000 killed, 3 million refugees, forced to flee after Islamic State attacks. Is terrorists, brutal massacres, beheadings, kidnappings, murders, devastations. U.S. conduct airstrikes against ISIS in Syria. Savages. ISIS beheads American journalists on YouTube. The Daily News writes, ISIS monsters behead U.S. journalists taunt Obama over airstrikes in Iraq. Savages. Do we really know what's going on? Do we have all the answers? What is God saying on today? Thus said the Lord of hosts, don't turn the world over to the demonic forces. Declare war on the devil's war. There has been an outcry throughout the world. There's a cry, a call for 40 days of prayer. Global prayer assembly, 24 hours nonstop prayer we are at war. Brothers and sisters, we can run away from it. The newspaper articles are just drenched with what's going on in the world. These horrific tragedies. And people are crying out, where is God? People are saying, God doesn't exist. We should not be serving a God that we can't see because he's not real. People are afraid. People are in pain. People are confused. In Joel 2 and 1, it says, Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound an alarm on my holy hill. And that's from the Ample Bible. In Joel 2.15, in the NIV, it says, Blow the trumpets in Zion, declare a holy fast, call a sacred assembly. This is what the Bible is telling us to do 
during this time. When we go into Ephesians 6 and 12, it says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Satan, knowing his time is short, has unleashed an all-out attack against the church. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the seal of the devil has come down unto you having a great wrath because he knows that he has but a short time revelation 12 and 12. this is not a time for the church to cower or hide in fear it is not a time for us to sit in our comfortable pews with our hands folded because we know that christ has already defeated Satan and has given us power and authority over him. We must confront him and the powers of darkness that now are working in the nations. We must bind the powers of darkness and tear down Satan's demonic strongholds. For the weapons of our warfare are not cardinal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. 2 Corinthians 10 and 4 we have been given power and authority over all the powers of the enemy. It's time that we use our God-given authority in prayer. Jesus said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpent and scorpion and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Luke 10, 19. It is war. It is a spiritual war that can only be won by engaging in a new level of strategic intercessory prayer. If there was ever time for the church to pray, it is now. We must break through the spiritual apathy that permeates the church. It is sad to say, but the vast majority of Christians spend very little time, if any, interceding and waging spiritual war on behalf of the global crisis that we are currently facing we cannot wage or win this war by hearing newscast least or less than 10 percent of the pastors and other leaders in the church today stand up in their churches led their people in focused prayer for god's solution to the world's crisis initiate and call for seasons of prayer or open their churches for all night prayer sessions church it's time to wake up and speak up the evil demonic forces that have been unleashed will not let up or loosen their grip on the nation unless the worldwide church make a united effort to pray god has directed many of his servants to release this prophetic prayer initiative. Friends, hear the call of the Spirit and do something about the call. Throughout the Bible, we read how God spoke to his servant, the prophet, and had them call his people together to lift their voices as one and seek his faith. When prophet Joel saw the devastation and destruction that had come upon Israel and knew that it was a judgment from God because of their rebellion and sin against him, he began to prophesy. He called the people together to fast, pray, and repent. This was a time of great desolation and desperation throughout Israel. Their crop and field was destroyed. Their harvest was gone. All of the vines and fruit-bearing trees had withered. Not only were their crops destroyed, but their seed had rotted in the ground. Their bonds were broken down and their cattle and sheep were dying. Amen. It would be wonderful if we could get every religious leader in the world to come together. America and Americans aren't exempt. We want to put a stop 
to what's happening in the world today, starting in this country first. We do not need a pandemic of the Ebola virus. We do not need to be fighting here on America's soil. We do enough of that between ourselves. Again, we need to remember David. But when David cried out to God, everything changed. God dramatically answered his prayer. Then the earth shook and quaked and the foundations of the mountains were trembling and were shaken because he was angry. God responded only after David cried out to him. David recognized that God delivered him from my strong enemies and from those who hated me, for they were too mighty for me. He continued to face trouble, but knew that God was with him and would deliver him. And God is with us saints today. He will deliver us. We knew when we heard that the Ebola virus was in the United States, that it was going to spread. And it has spread. Now, the only thing the CDC and the medical profession can do is isolate the Ebola virus from spreading even further. We heard so many discrepancies about whether or not people should come to this country, you know, and then be isolated or should they stay in the other country and be isolated for 21 days? Well, brothers and sisters, politicians did not act on this fast enough and it's here. And now the only thing we can pray that they will do, the government officials, is isolate the new cases within the hospitals that they have already put in place so that the men and women or children that contract Ebola will be on those units in those particular hospitals and make sure that they keep the hospital clean and isolated. Amen. We're not infallible. We're human beings. I am a nurse. I'm a registered nurse and I'm not infallible. We are given direction on how to use standard precautions so that we prevent the spread of germs. But again, we are human. We make mistakes and anything can happen. Amen. We are fighting a war and it's a spiritual war. People want to believe that the war is in the natural, but this is a spiritual war. We've had these type of outbreaks throughout the world for centuries. And what have we found? We have found that many people have died, you know, from the different diseases that they had no cure for in the past. And so again, here is the Ebola virus. And I'm sure many more will die before they find a cure. But what can we do as Christians? What is our job? Well, the scriptures tell us, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their lands. Second Chronicles 7.14 who is speaking? God is letting us know what we need to do. If ever there was a time for Christians to pray, it is now. Praise God. We have too many crises coming at us 
all at once. And these crises just add on to our individual everyday crises that we go through in our own personal lives. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We can feel David's fear since how desperate he felt. Later, we can understand more clearly why he said, I love you, O Lord, my strength, and why he looked at God as his rock, fortress, and deliverer. It was wonderful to know that God would save him from his enemies. And it's wonderful for us to know that just like God saved David, only he can save us and he will save us if we obey his word. And we already know everyone is not Christian, so everyone is not going to obey God's word. But it's up to us Christians to unite and pray and seek God's face to release us from these terrors in the world today. How do you respond when you face crisis or feel trapped in seemingly hopeless situations? And a lot of people have not felt this way. So this may be the first time. And my job is to let you know, don't be overwhelmed by it. Take three deep cleansing breaths and pray. Learn from David. These are opportunities to cry out to God, confide, and be confident that he will hear your prayers. Amen. Make him your strength your rock, fortress, and deliverer, your shield, your stronghold, the horns of your salvation. He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. And when I think about Joel, I think about the promises that God made his people. God's promise to those who believe and respond to his call. We can look at the answers and the result that God gave to Israel when they responded to his call to prayer through Joel. One, God told them that after they turned back to him with all their hearts through prayer, fasting and repentance, and after they called a solemn assembly and prayed, then the Lord will be jealous for his land and take pity on his people. Joel 2, 12 through 13 and 18. And that's coming from the NIV. Two, God promised supernatural provision and divine supply. Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil and ye shall be satisfied therewith, and I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. Joel 2.19 3. God promised to give them supernatural deliverance to fight for them and to drive out their enemies. But I will remove far off from you the northern armies and will drive him into a land barren and desolate. Joel 2 and 20. 4. God promised to open the windows of heaven and pour out the former and latter rains in such abundance that they would have plenty. The threshing floor will be filled with grain. The vats will overflow with new wine and oil. Joel 2.24 NIV And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. Joel 2.26 he promised total restoration, and I will restore to you the years that the locust had eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. Joel 2.25 Brothers and sisters, it's time. 
I pray you can hear the sounding of the alarm. And I pray that you will begin to pray whichever way. And while you're praying, don't forget, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We, even in the Ukraine and Russia crisis, one million displaced. Help us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Help your people worldwide. Open up their stony heart and let them understand that you are calling them to a unified prayer, vigilant. 40 days of prayer. And Father God, forgive us of our sins. I commit these problems to you. Brutal massacres, beheadings, kidnapping, murder, devastation, the Ebola virus, and any other epidemic viral attack on your people. Hamas, Israel, 50 day war, serious crisis. A thousand, a hundred thousand killed and three million refugees. Father, we need you. Amen.